after eight days to almost what must be 2,000 kilometers turning right there would send me home however that's not the end of the Pacific Highway is it so the plan is essentially today heading from Port Macquarie to Lake Macquarie via the old road as much as possible there's a couple of parts on this where we have to jump back on the freeway there's a couple of nice winding sections that the freeway now bypasses which should be enjoyable all right filled up the bike all right so i may have said in the last video that i was over all the maccas along this route um, but of course as everyone knows that excludes breakfast because bacon and egg muffins which of course are way better than sausage and egg McMuffins. Topped up with fuel, quickly devoured a bacon egg roll and some orange sugar. And uh, now I'm gonna head back out to the old road at Warhope and then south from there. All right, we're almost home, let's go. It's actually the beginning of the Oxley Highway and I would love to do the full length of it, but not today. There's a road just there, it's actually dirt, called the Old Highway Road. This bit's worth it. back on the freeway for a bit now and I must admit when I map this out there's a lot of sections where the old road is there but it's not joined up so like it'll go along and then end at a dead end and then it might sort of reappear somewhere but you can't sort of continue it through but then it, it just doesn't go anywhere so you'd have to be backtracking it so in those sections no real choice but rejoin the freeway bridge isn't there anymore. So that's why that section had finished. I was just thinking, this big DRZ beak on the front, probably not the best for aerodynamics. See what this road's like. Apparently, the old way to Tari. Kupanook was bypassed in March 2006, and I'm taking a route a little further north along Longsdale Road. In the late 1800s, the Savile property was the main crossing point for travellers going to and from Port Macquarie for almost 40 years. Pizza Hut, doesn't it? It's a car dealerships, that's for sure. You've seen just about every manufacturer represented and motorcycles.
Newcastle. See how tight that squeeze was between the truck and the bus? Can you imagine if every single truck and bus from Sydney to Queensland was running across this bridge? Don't want to head to Gloucester, just came from there. There's a point today where we cross over the trip coming up. Ah, uh, I know where we are. Ah, uh, this is interesting. So this is actually where we stop fairly frequently coming up um, from Sydney. Uh, that new roadside. Anyway, back on the freeway again. One more detour after this before Newcastle. That would be a nice alternative as well. I've always wanted to stop at that motorcycle museum, but I've never had the time. Today I've got the time, but it's not open. <laughs> One day. Freeway again, Wooten is where we're heading. No, through a road. <laughs> did I turn too early? I did. This one. That makes a bit more sense. Alright, let's take us through to Bullet Dealer. In 1940, a road from Bulladilla to Nyback via Wooten emerged as an unemployment relief program. The road remained gravel until 1955 when the Department of Main Roads sealed it. Needing only minor tweaks, it was upgraded to highway standards, 1950s highway standards mind you, because the notorious O'Sullivan's Gap and Wooten Bends remained. Not even any signs, like you know, you get those corner signs that say, you know, approach at this speed, sort of thing. But everyone sort of doubles. Even there sort of disappeared. And these ones are all old and falling apart. post-apocalyptic you know, movie here. The scenery is amazing. Campground somewhere up here as well. Construction began in 1997, creating a spanking new 22 kilometre route to the east, neatly bypassing the old Pacific Highway with more modern freeway benchmarks. Environmental incentives like fauna overpasses were included, setting the future trends for projects. So the road was then lost to all but the locals, falling quiet, and eventually she even shed the old Pacific Highway title for the Wooten Way in October 2005. Alright, so I've made a bit of a boo-boo. The drone is up there. For the last hour I've been trying to coax it down and it's not going to happen. Frustratingly, it has all the footage from this entire trip sitting on its SD card. And I have to leave it here. Dumbass. I'm just so frustrated myself for not 
because I, I went through that pass and thought oh that'll that'll make a good shot I should just grab a good shot and then I grabbed a couple of frames I thought that looks nice and then I thought oh, I really want to just get on with it I don't really want to stay here for much longer and I thought to myself don't be lazy that'll be a really cool shot you got it up nice and high it'll be over the trees so I turned around started to ride towards the road again and just went straight into a tree going back over the footage one of two things have happened here I use the lychee app when I do follows and I have either put the remote in the tank bag and that has inadvertently pushed the height stick down lowering the set height or I had set the height lower on a previous follow and then I didn't check it either way dropping my usual process of checking everything was my undoing here but you're probably also thinking hang on a second I've seen lots of drone footage already well there is more to this story to follow I took a break at Bulla Deal and I started thinking how do you get things out of trees I often call my wife in these situations because she's my sounding board and she said what about the fire brigade she found a number for a guy called Adam Garnett of the Wooten Rural Fire Brigade and as much as he generously desired to try and help he said it was just way too high for anything they could do but he did then say what about a tree lopper so I pulled out Google Maps and I started looking for local businesses and uh, rang a bunch of people and no one answered but I left messages it was starting to look like I was buying myself a new drone and then while I was riding along, I got a phone call. I pulled over the side of the road and a guy named Victor from Clearview Tree Services in Nybacca. He said he would drive past it this afternoon and have a bit of a look and see whether there was something he could do. So I'll continue on the journey and wait to hear from him. This is probably one of those rare exceptions where the, the new part of the freeway actually outgrows the bypass town. Pretty much always going right there. But I'm gonna follow the old road. I'm gonna follow it all the way, which means we're going via Swansea along the coast. here is interesting because this is the Pacific Highway named as such but rather than it being a bypass unused section it's instead a you know, busy congested road feeding the outskirts of Newcastle see the lake off in the distance Imagine all the M1 traffic trying to squeeze through here. <laughs> Be madness. I can do all of your There's a little section of the Pacific Highway in Swansea called the Swansea Bends, which was bypassed in 1992. It's still there hidden away in the bushlands beside the existing road. I pulled over in an attempt to find it and after three days of traveling back from the Gold Coast after all that time and all that distance but who should pull up next to me? Fancy seeing you here. How are you? <laughs> Whoa! Now are you gonna tell me that corner cut was intentional? <laughs> this looks doable. Yeah. That's oh, funny. I was just looking up where the old bends were. Uh, in the forest? Yeah. yeah. No, I'll leave it for today. It was just it was just a thought because the old Pacific Highway goes up there. It is kind of cool up there. Yeah. But well, I'm within a stone's throw, so I'm going to go home. I'm, I, I'm knackered. It must it's be good, really close. Good seeing you, Vern. Yeah, it was good seeing you, mate. Yeah. And oh, we'll catch up and do a ride at some yeah, some stage. Absolutely. And uh Thank you for that. All right. <laughs> no worries, mate. Good to see you. Uh, 
what was referred to as the Swansea Bend. A bit hard to get to, I was hoping to get a little sneak peek, but not today. Officially in the Central Coast. That is enough Pacific Highway for the time being. At 320 kilometers today has been a pretty long day. So I'll be staying the night at my parents' place, Lake Macquarie. But what about the drone, I hear you ask? Well, <laughs> I just saw a notification pop up. I'm literally just about to arrive at mum and dad's place now, but I just saw a notification pop up from the tree lopper and I think he said he got it. I checked my messages and he had sent me this photo. He mailed it back to me and after a few days it arrived, but would it still work? Actually, all we get. Gimbal's probably the main concern. Looks pretty good. Bit rattly. Now it sounds okay. It sounded a bit rattly when I first started up, but now it actually sounds pretty good. Give it one more quick launch. <laughs> I reckon we dodged a bullet on that one. Yes, it still worked and she's been off getting all sorts of adventure footage ever since. However, still haven't reached the end yet, have we? We're not entirely done with the Pacific Highway. See you in a little bit. Love you. Here we are, back to Pacific Highway once again. The final stint. Day eight. So this time last week, we are at the beginning of this journey. So yesterday we turned into here to get off Pacific Highway. Spent the night at mum and dad's place. My wife and the kids met me there, so that was nice. Now we just need to get the final stretch home. But you will notice that there's a part of this motorcycle that's new and clean. So that's the Garmin XT2. But essentially from here we're going to pass, follow the old Pacific Highway. It goes through Lizero, a few other suburbs, Gosford, and then we pass down what people most commonly refer to as old Pacific Highway, which is the Weekend Warriors racetrack. And then I can't come all this way from Queensland and not follow the track all the way through to Sydney, so that's what we're going to do. The Pacific Highway now turns left here and it basically zigzags its way down to Gosford and through Gosford it does sort of lose its name in a couple of spots. Now if you're travelling down and you want to take the non-highway road, while this is the old road, Pacific Highway, there is a much uh, nicer way. Heads out onto the western side. And interestingly, is also 
parts of that is the old road. So you kind of have a choice between the old road and the other old road. Depends on which era. It still blows my mind that people don't get on motorcycles more often because of this advantage. Look, here's a guy on a motorcycle who doesn't even know that he can use the bus lane. Wyong's one of those places that I've heard of many times, been near to many, many times, but never actually visited. There's connecting into an old part through Tumbi Yumbi. Just have family that lived up here. Surprisingly, a lot of bikes out today. Still some corners left. Here and there. It's funny, parts like this still resemble the, the same road I saw, you know, 500 kilometers back. Same look, same feel, same type of surface. Lizaro. This bit really isn't any different to any other part of the old road that I've travelled so far. It's just more congested. It's just more people. Of course, back in the day, it probably wouldn't have had so many roundabouts. This is where we sort of lose the nameplate a little bit. So through here, it actually becomes Man Street. So I'd be curious to know if this was actually a section of the old road here or not. So now we climb out of Gosford. And this is definitely part of the old road. What's amazing about this little section is that it's not hidden away somewhere. It's used so much on a day-to-day -day basis. Carry on, carry on. Someone I know lives here. Freeway straight ahead. Fastest way home. But no, we're turning right. This is where it gets interesting because Wiseman's Ferry Road and Peaks Ridge Road uh, are actually a part of the old road was sort of in the middle there somewhere where the old road came up the old way and then because of the congestion on that road they couldn't quite get over the hills so they instead went west and came back in east and then eventually uh, built the Mooney Mooney Bridge and that became the M1 that it is today. Yeah, Wiseman's Ferry Road, Pete's Ridge forgotten part of the freeway. I have declared this before but I still reckon that this part of the old Pacific Highway is the best part. Less people, it's more scenic. It may not be the greatest surface in the world but it's a lovely ride. And this was once the bridge that crossed the river that Mooney Mooney Bridge now crosses. Can you imagine the traffic? Yeah, I'm just going to pull over here. I want to show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. So from this bridge, a single little one lane bridge. Nine. Nice. You can see the Mooney Mooney Bridge up there through the trees. It's interesting how high it is. There it is. Up there. Crazy, isn't it? 
saw a photo um, of Mooney Me as it was being built and the spance across the distance of what the bridge was going to be uh, is insane and when you see it without the bridge there it gives you just the scale of the feet of that bridge and why it took so long obviously to to be able to cross it anyway let's get on with it I want to get home we're so close So, straight ahead, Pete's Ridge Road. The old road met the old road. This is now the second section of the old road, the old pack. It's a bit, bit of a slower pace. You know, there's other parts that have been on this same road that had 80 if not 100 kilometers an hour for the same sort of conditions. 60 is a little bit ridiculous. Comfortably 80 and it wouldn't be a problem. I don't know what making it 60 does to slow things down or reduce accidents or you know, reduce people going quick. At the end of the day, the people who are going to go quick are going to ignore any speed limit anyway, so it doesn't matter. So why not just make it a speed limit that most people are going to abide by? This part here is running alongside where the M1 drops to 90 k's an hour and you can imagine what this was like in the 60s when school holidays started and literally thousands of people were getting out of Sydney for the long weekend the traffic trying to get through this and you get you know one caravan or a truck that breaks down or something and just chaos this used to be a ferry to cross this river. That no pedestrian sign is new and uh, it's probably specifically targeted at doctors. Behind the sky, aka pits. Over here on the right, this is where the toll gates used to be. So it used to be a toll to use the freeway heading north. After eight days, to almost what must be 2,000 kilometers, turning right there would send me home. However, that's not the end of the Pacific Highway, is it? Pacific Highway A1, 22 kilometers to Sydney. Slightly different view to what I've had for the last few days. Same road though. Traveling all that way and sort of seeing all the different style of buildings and even though this is Sydney and yeah, there was very different place to out in the country it's the buildings are all the same stuff just different yeah different labels on them This old thing clicked over 60,000 kilometers, so 1,639 kilometers since we had our little birthday uh, about six days ago. That's crazy. I can see the finish line on the map, North Sydney up ahead. And here we are, North Sydney. i got to make sure I don't take the wrong turn here. <laughs> and that there is the end of the Pacific Highway. Oh my goodness. And the irony is, it ends in a roundabout. So you can just turn around.
around and do it again. <laughs>